Hi folks, Jake here with Banjo Ben once again, and today we are going to talk about um, how to keep your tailpiece on your mandolin from rattling. Uh, this is purely a simulation because on this particular mandolin there isn't a problem, the tailpiece isn't rattling, but um, over time, depending on you know how much you play a mandolin and what conditions they're subject to, these things can loosen up and and can require this fix even if they're not doing it now. And especially the lower end mandolins, a lot of them use these a lot cheaper tail pieces. So what happens um, and how you can identify that is when you're playing, there's a certain kind of buzz that a fret noise or a fret buzz would, would, would make. Um, but when it's a tail piece buzz, it's really awful. It sounds like you're taking a weed eater to your mandolin almost. <laughs> it's really bad. So um, if you can kind of diagnose if that's what it is by holding your hand on the strings or even like holding the tailpiece while you play it um, or having someone do that while you play it. And if the buzz quits, then you can pretty much tell that's what's going on. So um, what's happening is there's enough, like this is your playing scale here. Uh, this is where all the magic happens, but there's enough residual energy in these strings back here that they can cause a little bit of rattle on this tailpiece. It can cause the cover plate to vibrate against the strings. And there's a couple of steps we can take to, to minimize that. Uh, first thing we're going to want is just an old rag, because when you push on these ears, how you get these cover plates off, you uh, put the rag over it to keep it from digging into your thumbs. I, I will mention also, if it's not this traditional style of mandolin with cover plate, chances are you probably won't be having some of these issues. Um, you know, most of the cast tail pieces, the solid tail pieces are designed where this really isn't going to be much of a problem. Uh, but if it is, uh, some of these things we do along the way can help with those too. And uh, I'll kind of explain that as we go. So the first thing we want to do is pop this thing off here. And before I do, you'll notice that this cover plate is straight. It's just at a flat um, angle. And that's causing it to contact these strings. And so first thing we do is we're going to just slide it off the back. And you can see this one from the manufacturer already comes with a piece of felt under the strings, which is good. That's probably one of the reasons why we're not having many problems with that one. Uh, what I'm going to do first is take the cover plate here and I'm going to put it against a table. And you can see where kind of these lines are in it, where the, uh, the cover plate is folded over. And this is the surface that actually engages the edges of the uh, tailpiece itself and makes for like a friction tight fit. So I'm going to just kind of flush it up with those and use my two thumbs in the middle on the edge of the table. And very gently, ever so slightly, we're going to give it, a, apply a little pressure there evenly across it. And that's going to give us a little bit of an upward bend, like so. And what that's going to do, that's going to keep this piece of the tailpiece from making hard contact with those strings. So we do that first. Next thing we do is um, we're going to take this piece of felt. Now, you can use anything. I've seen people use anything from leather to folded up napkins or paper towels. I mean, you know, whatever works. I find this is kind of the most efficient because you can get it fairly cheap in big sheets and, and it's firm. This one is, let's see, a second here. Without squashing it too much, it's right at about a tenth of an inch, which would be, if you're just using a common ruler, a little under an eighth of an inch thick. Um, so we cut that, which I've already done, to where it'll just sit inside. You know, you don't want it hanging over or that's not going to do us any good. And I'll kind of lay it down here before the strings climb up because when I shove my tailpiece up, it's liable to ride forward a little bit anyway. And what that's going to do, it's just going to prevent the strings. What we're trying to accomplish here is prevent the strings from making any kind of metal to metal contact with the tailpiece. So then we're just going to take our tailpiece and slide it back on. This is also good for tightening up the tailpiece. Now this one fit pretty good already, um, but sometimes you'll have some where these cover plates are real loose and that applies enough pressure for these lips on the edge to grab the tailpiece a little better and to tighten up. And you just push it up until it's firm. Now we have, uh, like I said, it wasn't a problem before, but as you can see, we have clearance there. Um, there's no 
Sorry, I'm trying to get to focus. There we go. There's no strings touching any metal anywhere. Now, to take it one step further, um, even after you do this, you're still gonna have a ringing of that part of the, the string. So like if you like a real dead chop or a real woody tone, even to your lead playing like I do, when you chop, you can hear that extra ringing that comes out after. So to eliminate that, um, this is like one of the handiest things ever that I use on every mandolin, uh, the harmonic suppression grommets. And we sell these in the store. I've done a video, a separate video, just on these. But I like to use them, even with this tailpiece fix, I like to use these in addition to that. Basically, you just take one between every pair of strings and you just slip it in like so. You do all four strings that way. And what that does, in essence, it acts like if you were to hold your hand back here and chop it. Now you listen. That removes maybe 80% or more of that artificial ringing that we had. So anyway, those are just some tips to kind of get you up and in good shape on your mandolin tailpiece for making noise. You'll see a lot of professionals that have these style of tailpieces, rather than worry about all this, they just slide the cover plate off and throw it in the case. Uh, they don't even mess with it. They just leave them off, you know, and so you just see an open. Uh, but depending on how, you know, some people depend on how they hold the mandolin and what angle their arm comes at the strings, it, it, it can be sharp on the edges to not have this on there. So uh, that's a way we can fix it and still make our uh, cover plate functional. And things like that. Anyway, I'm sure I probably left out or forgot a dozen details. So if you guys have any questions, give me a shout or shoot me an email. And as always, thanks for watching. We appreciate it.